There we go. You can see Joe Rogan. And uh, so he had some things to say about the choice we've got. Joe Jorgensen is the Libertarian candidate. She's not going to win. She's not going to get a lot of votes at all because America doesn't want a Libertarian. America's not Libertarian today. I just want a little bit of sanity. Forget free markets. Just a little bit of sanity. Just a little respect for the founders. A little respect for the rule of law. But, and, and Joe Jogerson is too radical for America today. And she's part of a libertarian party that is completely in disrepute. Completely in disrepute. So she has no chance and the party cannot win. And it... So let's, let's look at Brett Weinstein. He's got some proposals. Let me put my um, headphones on. He's got, he's got a proposal on how to, how to give us more choices when it comes to November. The Joe Rogan experience. Right. How did we get here? It's Good 2020. Question. We are facing a global pandemic, which incidentally I do want to talk to you about. Okay. Um, we are facing a global pandemic. We are facing rioting in the streets, a movement that's showing signs of a uh, Maoist challenge to the most fundamental aspects of the West. Maoist challenge, which is great. I mean, Maoist challenge in, in a sense of complete rejection of individual rights and communism, kind of, a, kind of complete control over our lives. It's good to see somebody like Brett Weinstein recognize that that is what is being asked for in the streets. That is where we are. Right. And we are going to have to choose between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Perfect. I love the way he says that. And he's so right. Because it is so disgusting that that is the choice. 21st century in America, we're facing all these challenges. And what do we get? We get Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Unbelievable. What? Right. Neither one of these people is capable of or inclined towards the kind of leadership that you have just described we would need. Absolutely. Absolutely. Agreed. And I, didn't, I don't know what leadership uh, Rogan mentioned. I mean, Rogan was going to vote for Bernie Sanders, so Rogan is questionable on all of this to begin with. But there is no capacity for leadership anywhere in either political party right now. So that means at, a very, at the very least, if we do not divert our course, right, if November comes and we are choosing between those two, then that means we're putting off any solution at least four years because the president, the president would be essential to changing our course. I think that's right. I think you need at this point leadership. You need a voice. You need somebody to articulate some ideas, articulate a vision. And, and I was going to do a show on leadership today. Maybe we'll do it um, next week. But, but you need leadership. And right now, Donald Trump is not a leader. To be a leader, you have to have principle. You cannot be a fly-by-night, shoot from the hip, whatever you feel like, whatever, you know, whatever your whims are, just change day by day and cannot for the constitution of the rule of law in this country, which is what Donald Trump is. And Joe Biden is just, a, a, he's just incompetent, can barely get two sentences out. Neither one of these are going to inspire which is what leaders must do. Neither one of these can motivate, which is what leaders must do. Neither one of these have an agenda, which that's what leadership is about. It's about bringing to reality an agenda, a vision, a, 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 a goal. And neither one of them has this. They're truly, truly incompetent. I can't think of two more incompetent individuals to be running for president of the United States of America. We're not talking about some third-rate banana republic somewhere. Right? And this is just built into these parties now. Right? Obama, I can't figure out why it's the case. I really like Obama personally. He seems like the right guy to me. But yeah, Brett. Uh. His, his administration at, an, at, a, at a policy level was 
indistinguishable from Bush. In some ways, it was worse. So what we've got is stuff. parties that decide what we get to choose from, and the game is to prevent us from having any choice that could possibly solve the problem. So we have to fix that. We have to address that problem, and we have to break their stranglehold. And, you know, uh, in fairness, Trump was a challenge to that two-party duopoly. He's not really a Republican. That's true. Right? right, but he's also not really an alternative. It's like, a th but he is a Republican now because the Republican Party has basically shifted itself to become Trump. He wasn't a Republican. The Republican Party wasn't Trump, but today, today he is the Republican Party, and the Repub Repub Republican Party is him. That is where they are. So it would be it would be a completely different world today. If the Republican Party had actually rebelled against Trump, if the existing Republican Party actually had presented a nominee to go after Trump, but they can't because, what is it, 90% of Republicans support Trump, of registered Republicans support Trump? He is one of the most, um, one of the most respected or uh, admired or supported Republican presidents by Republicans ever. They love him. He is the Republican Party today. He's not an outsider anymore. Third crime family, right? Yeah. You've got the Republicans, the Democrats, and now the They Trumps. sort of co-opted their ideology to fit his needs. Yeah. Um, but it's not a solution. Right. So we have to get that solution, which means we have to get by the parties. Trump proved that was possible. Right. I think if there's any of it, if there was ever a time where an independent party has a chance, now's the time. If someone steps in and has a, a real solution. And also, for, in terms of the distribution of that information, now's the time. I agree with that. I think now is the time. Because... All right, I think we're back. All right, we're back. Here we go. Someone was a, a person of substance that we really believed in. We said, uh, that person can really do this. This actually could happen. Let's vote independent. It could happen. They don't have a monopoly on the distribution of information anymore. And that's terrifying to them because they used to be able to count on the shills on the left and the right to get the word out for them. But they, they don't have that anymore. You have so many people that really don't have an ideological foundation in either one of them that are talking and they're reaching millions of people. That's a rare moment in time. And this is, in my opinion, the very best time for someone to step in that's not, they're not compliant. They're not, they don't have to give it, they don't, they don't need that policy machine behind them or, or the political machine behind them. Well, I've got a plan. Okay. But we'd have to find a really big podcast, I think, to get enough momentum. There's you, none of those out there. You though. haven't encountered a big podcast? No, they don't. Yeah, so Brett's going to propose his plan. So let's yes. just okay. analyze his plan. <laughs> um, all right. You want to hear the plan? Sure. Okay. The Rock and Jocko Willink. Mm -hmm. um, get them together. Well, you know, let's put that. Uh, Okay. <laughs> Let's put that to the side. It's not part of the plan, but it actually could fit. Oh, okay. Okay. So here's the the plan. Um, this plan needs a better name, but the working title is the Dark Horse Duo Plan. Um, Dark Horse Duo. And the plan looks like this: We draft two individuals. We find two people. One of them is center left, and one of them is center right. So two individuals who have no principles and no plan, because they're just in the center center left and center right, they can agree on what? On, on more violations of rights and they're not going to be crazy, granted, but what are they going to agree on exactly? And what are we going to get? What are the principles that are going to guide them? What is the leadership that they're going to project? Leadership towards what? Now, I think electing Trump is the worst of all worlds. Really. And these people have to have certain characteristics, a minimum set. They have to be patriotic, they have to be courageous, and they have to be highly capable, right? But that's it. 
Okay. Center left and a center right. And we pair them together. And we draft them uh, with the following plan, that they will govern as a team. That is to say, every important decision will be uh, discussed and they will decide what to do as a team and only in cases where they cannot reach agreement or whether something has to be whenever something has to be decided on a very short time scale like a military decision um, does the person who inhabits the role of the president uh, govern alone okay we draft these folks and then four years down the road they switch and the one who had run for president now runs for the vice presidential spot, and the one who uh, was vice president now runs for president. And they continue this way until one of two things happens. Either we vote someone else in, or one of them has inhabited the office of president twice and is no longer eligible, and then that person has to be replaced. So we have a patriotic team governing together from center left and center right. But when you say drafted, that's the problem. Like someone has to be motivated to ruin their fucking lives to try to run this country because well, that's what happens to everybody that does it. I so here's the problem, right? So you, you have two respectable people, one from the center right and one from the center left. Now, I would vote for the, any duo pretty much that Brett Weinstein is going to propose because they're better than the people running right now and uh, they're going to do less damage than the nutty people today in the Republican and Democratic Party. But this isn't the solution. This is just the way to buy some time. And look, I'm for buying time because I don't think there is a solution other than buying time at this point. So I'm all for this plan. I'm mean, even for the people he's got. He's going to nominate in a minute the actual people to do it. I would vote for them in a heartbeat over the options we have today. The problem I see is that Brett is putting way too much hope in this. Because he thinks the solutions are somewhere in the middle. And yet the solutions, somebody says online, this is great. This is the path of least destruction. I, I love that. That's perfect. Yeah, it's the path of least destruction. Because the solutions are not in the middle. The solutions are radical as they always are. They're so radical they mean a return to the founding fathers. They mean a return to the founding documents of this country. They mean a return to the founding principles of this country. It means a return to the rule of law in this country. And I just don't think pe two people from the center can do that. They can't because they don't believe in it. They have no concept of it. So I'm great with this plan as long as it's understood as the path of least destruction, not a path to liberation, not a path to freedom, but a path to buying us time and anything that can prevent us from electing Donald Trump or Joe Biden buys us time because I think both Trump and Biden are accelerating us towards disaster. They're accelerating us towards authoritarianism. They're accelerating us, accelerating us towards the end of this country. Brett is not a principle thinker. And, it's, and you see, this is the thing. That he's not advocating any principles. And he's not a principle thinker. He doesn't believe in, in real principles. In politics, everybody out there, almost everybody out there, is a pragmatist. Now, Trump is a committed pragmatist in a way and committed to emotion and committed to his narcissism in a way that nobody else is. But everybody is a pragmatist. It's not like... Joe Biden has a philosophy or guiding principles. He's a pragmatist. I mean, Bernie Sanders is closer to having principle. Brett, in his politics, is a complete pragmatist. And both of them are. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, Brett, Brett Hall, not Brett Weinstein, mentions uh, that both Weinsteins are kind of philosopher king types. And yes, they are. They're the smart the smart intellectuals who think they have all the answers. Well, they think they have all the answers to some things. But they don't really, and they, and they don't have any principles to guide their answers. They're wishy-washy. They're pragmatists when it comes to politics. They don't have principles. They just think that because they are smarter than everybody else, their pragmatism 
would actually work and other pragmatists, uh, you know, and other, other peoples won't. But there's no principle behind their views. But then that's an obstacle. You're spelling out right. an obstacle that I would argue is solvable, that we know these people. Who? Okay, so okay. let's just say that's the plan so far. And yes. We can talk about what problems it solves as much as you want. I feel like I should have a drink and listen to this. You're welcome to have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> it's you're probably a good I'm idea. I'm kidding, but go ahead. Um, but, uh, okay, so here's my proposal. So the plan could be right, and my proposal for who we draft could be wrong, and I'm happy to see other people swapped in. Okay. But my proposal would be uh, Admiral William McRaven on the right. You know who that is? No, I don't. Okay, he is a Navy SEAL, former Navy SEAL. Um, he was, until 2018, the Chancellor of the University of Texas. He is a um, very cogent, uh, center-right Republican. So I don't know anything about this uh, general, uh, although he sounds like an admirable guy. He was special operations leader on many, many, many important missions from capturing Saddam Hussein to bin Laden to uh, many, many other things. I mean, he is uh, clearly one of the great, you know, military men of his generation. He was the chancellor of the University of Texas. Uh, so he's run a big organization. He is now a kind of a leadership management consulting type and uh, probably a good guy. I, I don't know what his politics are. To say that he's center-right, I, I don't even know what that means. No, it's not the guy with the eye patch. <laughs> so it's, it's you know, uh, I, I don't know anything about his politics. So it sounds like a decent guy. I'd probably vote for him over anybody in the field right now. But I, I, I can't comment. I tried to look him up a little bit. Couldn't find much on his politics. So I have no real views. But he sounds like a decent human being, which is can't say about the current crop of candidates. Um, he was the lead on the bin Laden raid. Yep. And he is, uh, I think, universally respected by people who know him. I've never heard anybody say negative things about him. Um, on the center left. Let me see this gentleman. I'm going to look at his face. Yeah, you're, you're going to oh. know. There he oh, is. Oh, yeah, I have seen that guy before. Yeah. I like it. Looks like a president to me. Yeah, he looks like a president to me, too. Yeah. You know who else looks like a president That's to me? Who? Andrew Yang. I'm, I'm down with that. Okay. So, I like what you're saying now. Good. So. I'm not sure what they see in Andrew Yang. I mean, he's, he seems like a nice guy. He's kind of mellow, but I, he doesn't look presidential. He doesn't sound presidential. He, he's not particularly motivating. He's not particularly. He's a geek. Um, his ideas, are, uh, you know, as a central planner, as another philosopher king, I guess he fits the Bet Weinstein model because he is, um, he's really smart and he thinks he can run our lives like Brett and, 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 and his brother do. But, eh, I don't think he can win. He couldn't even win the Democratic nomination. Why would you take a loser? Why would you take a loser? And run a loser. My point. Uh, those Admi two guys together. Yeah, those two. Is that camera on? Yes. Admiral, your country needs you. It really does. There's an appeal. Let's appeal to his. Uh, it's time to sacrifice some more. Never more than now. Um, and I know that the job of president is a sucky one. I'm sure the job of vice president's even worse. Um, but. Please consider this plan because uh, the republic is in jeopardy. Now, we already know that Andrew Yang is up for the job because he ran for he office. He ran. Yes. And, you know, <laughs> faced appallingly stupid obstacles that, in my opinion, may in be the reason that he's not the nominee. Um, so here we got two people. One of them, I think, will do so out of duty. The other is crazy enough to want the job in the first place. Um, and... What are they? Well, they're both patriots, they're both courageous, and they're both highly capable. All right. This well, is, I, know. This is the I, I think that's enough. If you want to watch the rest, you can, you can go watch, uh, watch it on Joe Rogan. Um, I, I think the point here is that there's no proposal here. 
other than let's get some people who are relatively safe, not, uh, sane. Now, I would vote for Andrew Yang over Biden and over Trump in a heartbeat. I, I don't think he could get half of his proposal passed because most of them are nutty and, and he'd get stuck in a, in a Congress that was fighting against each other. And I like, I like the, 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 you know, the, the, the Navy SEAL guy, the admiral, I guess, or the general. Um, sounds like an interesting choice. And yeah, that's great. But what is the goal other than sanity? Now, sanity is a good goal. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to slam sanity. Sanity is better than insanity. And what we have today is insanity. And what we're looking at in, in, in this election is insanity. So I'll, I'll take sanity. But let's be honest, this isn't a solution. This is, again, a philosopher king appointing smart people who he thinks can run things well. But they know, there's no principle. What is the principle that can save America? What is the principle that can lead us out of this darkness? What is the principle by which we solve the problems that we face? What is the principle by which we should legislate or eliminate legislation in the future? Nobody has a principle. Andrew Yang certainly doesn't. I mean, he, he's bought into the, the, the uh, Luddite ideas about jobs. He's got a weird view of we should pay everybody. and you know, uh, uh, But at least he's got some ideas. So I'll give him that. He's, he's, he's better than 90% of other politicians because at least he's trying. But again, no principles. And the principle, of course, is individual rights. But they don't know it. Certainly those guys don't know it. Certainly Joe Rogan and Brett Weinstein wouldn't know it. I mean, I would be surprised if Brett Weinstein recognized that there was such a thing as individual rights. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the Super Chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually... Uh, supported the show for the first time so i'll do it again maybe we'll get some more today um if you like what you're hearing if you appreciate what i'm doing then i appreciate your support uh those of you who don't yet support the show please take this opportunity go to yourronbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com your own book show and um and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this uh, to keep this going i'm not sure when the next